Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach podcast, episode number 95. Welcome to June the 15th. Today, we're going to be talking all about boot camps. That's right, that very popular term. Many school districts are doing this time of year, the professional development marathon. How do you do it? How do you structure it? What's good? What's bad? And most importantly, how do you do it these days virtually? We're going to talk about all of those things today, but we want to hear what you guys are doing. Check us out over on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. Find out all the great stuff at AskTheTechCoach.com. And of course, this show drops every single Monday morning right before you wake up at 6 a.m. Eastern. We would love to have you guys hit that subscribe button and be a part of the Teacher Cast Educational Tech Coaches Network. With me, as always, is my good co-host, Susan Vincent. Susan, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I am great. Great to be back. And we're here in mid-June. Weather is getting hot down here in Kentucky, and we're surviving. We are. The weather is getting hot here in beautiful Connecticut. You know, usually this time of year, I'm looking forward to getting on an airplane or driving to the local ISTE conference. Obviously, that's not the case, but it is that time for professional development. I know you're working on PD stuff. I've got some PD stuff we're going to talk about today, but I got to ask, the topic today is boot camps. Have you ever run a boot camp? I have. Google, Google Educator Boot Camp, that's a popular one. So I've definitely been involved in those and just various things through the years. You know, one of the topics that we're going to focus on here and that probably, I guess, can get us started is relevancy and what topic is relevant at that time. So, you know, the last few years, it's been Google Boot Camp. You know, a few years ago in my former districts, it was teacher websites. And we ran, you know, a week-long boot camp going through the different schools and presenting that same topic to all of our different teachers. So, yes, I have totally been involved. What about you, Jeff? I have had the opportunity to create, run, help, support several boot camps, especially in my previous district. I, I, I put together multi-day boot camps uh, on different topics. You know, again, Google was the primary focus, um, but I did a whole thing on STEM education. I did a whole boot camp day on, on, on you know, different thinking styles. I have this theory that says a boot camp does not start in the summertime. I have a theory out there that says the boot camp actually starts in September. It just happens to run. And let, let me talk a little bit about this first, because if you're doing a boot camp over the summer, Susan, you are asking a teacher on their off time, mostly because these you know school districts are not paying teachers to come in over the summertime. Right. Some are, but most aren't. You're asking them to take a day out of their life and come in and spend five to eight hours with you. And whether they got PD training or whether they're doing it for the love of whatever, those invitations really go out in September when you start forming your relationships with teachers. Yes, very much. And, you know, we're all about relationships here um, as we uh, uh, mentor tech coaches. So that is huge is forming those relationships and then getting to know back to the whole relevancy idea, what those teachers need, why they need it, and how to approach those individual people in getting them the training they need. It's all about having fun over the summertime, right? When we're looking yes. at boot camps, and, and by the way, the one that was recently done a couple of days ago from the global Google Educator Group was absolutely fantastic. I hope everybody had a chance to check that out, and I hope everybody had a chance to check out our bonus episode of Ask the Tech Coach that came out last Friday. We called it 94A, if you guys are looking at iTunes. <laughs> um, all about the GEGs and the GEGs that are popping up. Check out all that stuff over at askthetechcoach.com. But Susie, you know, when we're looking at these boot camps, there's a lot of questions involved. Should you do it? Should you not do it? How long does it last? Um, how do you get your school district to buy lunch for everybody, if that's possible? 
Um, when do you do it? All right, let's tackle some of these questions. First of all, should school districts be doing long form PD or should they just offer an hour session here or there? Because a lot of people say, while I'm at the building, just keep teaching me. But that's harder on the tech coaches. Yes, it is hard on the tech coaches because it's a lot, like I was referring to earlier, it's a lot of the same kind of like teaching the same course seven periods a day. It's a lot of the same presentation several times throughout a week or a period of two weeks. So it is hard on the tech coach, but what are those teachers getting out of it? And that's where you need to have, you know, that vision as a building, as a district of what really is your goals? What do you want the teachers to learn? What are the district's expectations for them in the school year? So, you know, you really have to answer those questions with whoever is involved, you know, you as the tech coach planning it and going to your superiors and, you know, asking for that support and money if need be, obviously. When we're looking at this, you know, I've been very successful with the boot camps I've run because I've made them all about students, even though in the background it was how do I get these teachers level one trained? I never once called my boot camp getting ready for level one. I think there's a reason for doing it that way. If you're going to do a global camp and you're going to be promoting spend time here, now you're ready for the test. I think there's a reason for that. Yes. But I also find that mostly in school districts, not everybody cares. Not everybody wants to be a level one cert, but they all want to learn how to do better in their in their classrooms using the technology that we have, right? So showing off how to make a something using Google Slides, let's say, but oh, by the way, it covers every single skill that you need for the test. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm very big whether I'm teaching or coaching is how much can I teach you without actually telling you that I'm teaching you, right? So right. Um, when I when I run my boot camps, they're usually four or five hours long, and they usually focus on two or three apps per hour, and they're always project based. And then when we do the ending, it's it's kind of like the wax on, wax off, right? Like he doesn't realize mm -hmm. he's learning offense and defense by painting by painting a fence or washing a car, right? So at the end, we take all those projects together and we go, look at what we've learned. Here's what the test needs. By the way, the district's willing to pay the 10 or 15 bucks for the test. Are you with me? And then another, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. And another great example, you mentioned involving the students earlier, which then indirectly involves the teachers because you're bringing the teachers in to watch what you're doing with students. A very successful one I've seen is the robotics boot camps that um, get held. That's a popular thing here in Kentucky. And I've been mm -hmm. involved in a couple of them where you're teaching STEM concepts that robotic design um, through our, pro and we use the Project Lead the Way program and getting those students involved and those teachers are there observing and really absorbing that information and those concepts. So again, they don't realize they're learning when they're learning. Absolutely. And the other thing that if you're focusing your boot camps on skills, on teaching a project, right? Like there are times where I go in and I have to break the fourth wall. We're doing this to teach you this to get your students here. And there's sometimes where I just walk in and I go, all right, here's a robot. Let's figure this out. You're <laughs> teaching them without actually, you know, like, I don't believe every class needs to start with an anticipatory set, first of all. Hey, let's do this. What do you think? I'll see you in 10 minutes. Go have some fun. Exactly. And then you do, do the debriefing. But if you do that, really what they're doing also is getting to see you as an instructor. They're getting to know you as an instructor. They're getting to see you outside of the coaching role and that can only help you be in the coaching role. Yes, because that is a huge relationship, right? Yes. So let's talk a little bit about some of these things here. Right? We've got a couple strategies about doing all of this. And one of the things that you mentioned is the word relevancy. How do you determine what the teachers need? Is that just a send out a Google form or is there more to it than that? I mean, to me, there's a lot more to it because, you know, relationship, 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 you know, just like a teacher observing our students, we get a feel for what that student needs by observing their performance, listening to them read passages and know where they are. So as a tech coach, we're going to do the same thing with the teachers, you know, walking into their classroom, watching them teach. What are they, what tech tools are they using? What tech tools can you suggest? And then work that into your 
training, what's going to be relevant to them at this time? And, you know, we've obviously all been through distance learning. So, you know, those types of things for my teachers, my elementary teachers, Google Classroom is going to be hugely relevant this summer as I plan my trainings. Now, you just mentioned something interesting there because <laughs> Google Classroom, right? It's been around. Mm -hmm. I get that not everybody's on it, but we just all went through 14 weeks of everyone's on it, right? Right. Generalizing, of course. So what does that mean for your boot camp? Does that mean you're going to start with this is how you make a class or you just assume that people know how to do or you know, maybe that's a five minute out of your hour long presentation yes. versus being a 50 minute out of the presentation. I'm assuming that we can be able to do more things with our boot camps these days because – well, let's face it, the teachers were just forced into 14 weeks of, of craziness. Right. And they they care if this is the right wording, they care about it now. It's relevant to them. You know, they've had to kind of jump into using it without really knowing how to use it. Now they really care of, oh, maybe I can use this in my classroom. So yes, I will approach it from the basic level again. You know, that basic level will be maybe five minutes. But then as we get more advanced, here is how you can expand your knowledge. Well, here's what else you can do with it. You know, I've done the Google form. I've also done just basic emails. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, here's 10 ideas that I'm thinking about. You know, maybe you send them to your generals. You know, you send them to those 20 or 30 teachers that you're really close with. And you just go, guys, what are you thinking? Like, w would this be of interest to you? Right. Yes. It, you know, you're you are not ISTE. You are not putting together a name and a description and a you know, students will be able to right. you're just like, guys, I want to do something on docs. I want to do something on robots. I want to do something on what do you think? Would you come out to this if it was in the middle of August? Mm -hmm. You know, anything to get the temperature of the deal. The other thing that I know in thinking about boot camps is flexibility. Right. Yes. When do we want to be doing this? Do we want to do this the week after school? I, I know, uh, our, you know, Nick. Uh, my former co-host here, he has three training days built into his school district where the teachers have to go to those. Like they're built into the teacher contract saying, if you don't make so many PD hours during the school year, you have to attend these. And and it's different doing volunteer PD and it's different doing you must be here PD. Absolutely. And we were like that in my former district where we had those built in days at the end where me and my co -work, my coworkers and I would, um, that's when we did the website training I referred to from a few years ago. That's when we did that marathon. I um, mean, my new school system, they have a couple of days, but some of it is, you know, closing things out, turning in grades and such, and then we can just offer volunteer from there. But they have to have a certain number of um, credits. So, you know, they're going to have to attend sometime. So whether that's at the end of the year or, you know, those days in the middle of the school year where you offer this and that. Is it the calendar that determines whether people are there? Is it the descriptions? Is it the titles? I know I tried to always do beginner and advanced, but I tried not to say the words beginner and advanced because sometimes those work and sometimes they're kind of insulting the people. And sometimes it's, well, what's advanced? And my recommendation was advanced just means you're not a beginner. Obviously. Yeah. How comfortable are you? Where's the line? You and I don't want to be in a Google classroom session for people who have never made a classroom, but I love to be in an Eric Kurtz, Google classroom session talking yes. about how to do Google classroom. Absolutely. Yes. And the calendar has a lot to do with it. You know, life in general, family life, dynamics, you know, so many things are, um, you know, part of that determination of whether they're going to come or not. And interest level is high up there. You know, again, relevance. Is it relevant to them at the time? They're going to show up if they know that this is one of the only times that you're going to offer that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what I call getting cute, right? Um, <laughs> things that have worked for me and also the same thing that didn't work for me. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Lego master educator. And when I went to the ISTE conference a couple years ago, they gave us all six bricks and told us to go make a duck. It's one of their awesome <laughs> little icebreakers, right? And the idea is with six bricks, you can do anything. And, you know, again, show me what your duck looks like. Well, I bought like 80 bucks worth of Legos one year, brought it all in 
and told everybody to go make a duck. And they looked at me like, are you crazy? Like, why are we doing this? I'm here to learn something. And I couldn't for the life of me get these group of people past. No, this is learning something. This is giving your students the opportunity to be creative and successful. Oh, by the way, now let's do a math lesson. They couldn't get past <laughs> themselves. So what's your thoughts on getting cute, right? Because we all go to the ISTEs and we see all these wonderful sessions of, you know, so-and-so family feud and so-and-so EDU. Yes. And, and you try to bring those back. Absolutely. <laughs> Susan, sometimes they work. And sometimes, sometimes they, they don't. Um, I've done sessions back to back. One of the ones that I, I picked up from my, my good friend, John Carippo at Q was to do Iron Chef. Right. So you say mm -hmm. you have Google Slides and you have a math lesson and you have eighth graders. You have 45 minutes. Go. And you need to build a lesson. I've seen that one be awesome. I've seen that one fall on its face, even on the same day. Yes. Should we be cute? Obviously, it's about reading the room. But you can't always read, like you know. And, and you don't you, always know your. You don't always know who they are. You may not right. have a relationship. So, what um, does cute look like in Kentucky? I mean, the same thing. I mean, you know, I'm like you. I've tried things. They flopped. I've tried the same thing at another school. Even you know, I have four campuses, and I've tried one thing in one place, and they have loved it all over it and then they're in their classroom doing it the next day and then i tried at the another campus and i'm like oh they're like no that's not going to work for me so it's just reflection after you you know do it yourself of you know how can i find a happy medium and and that's hard i'm still learning that after you know i've been presenting at conferences and to my own staffs for years and it's still you know that fine line between cute and relevant and you know not boring and all that stuff <laughs> when we're looking at that subject of being cute though you know knowing your audience is one thing if you look at your list and this is your school district and you see certain people certain ability level you know i wouldn't do iron chef google apps with newbies no I would do Iron Chef Google Apps if I knew that three or four people could be used as ringers and I could put newbies with them. And then maybe, you know, I've done it where I've gone to those ringers and said, look, we're going to try this. I'm putting the groups together. Here's the concept. Help me have fun with everybody. Right. Right. I mean, that's it's hard. So, I mean, I've even had, you know, in one of our Google boot camps one year, we tried a break the ice activity and to teach them how to make a Google slide, put a background in, put an image in. And it was called um, with my, with a former colleague and we called it, what's your jam. Some of them took to it right off. You know, they had, we had them put the background on the Google slide, put pictures that had to do with their life and make the um, text real pretty and cute. Some of them went right off with it. Then others are over here. Like, again, you said like with your Lego example, why are we doing this? I'm here to learn how to do Google slides. But that's part of it. And we had to just reiterate the fact that think about your own students in your classroom. You know, how do you engage your students? And we're trying to model some of the same type of things with you guys as teachers. So sometimes you even have to go on and explain why you're doing the cute activity. <laughs> And, you know, all these things that we're talking about, these are good questions that tech coaches and professional development givers should be asking exactly before you get in. Right. Oftentimes I get asked to go into different school districts and I just have a list of questions to the principal or whoever's hiring me. Do you want cute or do you just want me to come in and do dry? And that's not a negative. That's what are you looking for me? Do you want me to talk yes. over a PowerPoint or can I come in and bring the Legos and have a good time? Right. I've done the Lego duck thing in 10 minutes and I've done the Lego duck thing and realized, oh, crap, that's been 45 minutes. <laughs> With both, hey, we're having fun. It's been 45 minutes. And I've had, oh, this is dragging out. It's been 45 minutes. Exactly. And you never know. And then you do it at like an ISTE event because you're doing like a three hour ISTE workshop. And you're like, no, this is it's a good way to get a good half an hour in. I mean, you know, a couple years ago when I did the tech coach workshop, um, it was no, like we, we did an intro. We did an intro activity that was nothing on the conversation, but it got everybody to feel more comfortable with each other. Absolutely. And it was a great icebreaker in all that. And that is important. 
But the question here, Susan, is what happens if you don't see your 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 coworkers, right? What happens now that we're in a virtual environment? Should we be looking at doing smaller PDs? Like, should a boot camp be many one half hour pre presentations? Should a boot camp be watch six YouTube videos and do a project? Here's your Google Classroom. What are you thinking about these days when it comes to making a virtual, long form, thematic? event for your teachers to get credit well i mean i'm truly in the midst of that now taking all these things that we've learned and need for the new school year and i'm doing a combination of um, making videos putting them on my, on my youtube channel for them to access through playlists um, i mean another way another idea besides a youtube playlist is you know curate those through wakelet so you know some of the and, and other curating sites so some of those things i'm working on you know as well as just back to the older days of making a printed instructional sheet on a Google Doc so they can just go through step by step of how do I do this and accompany that with the video so I can get all those learning styles and then also be available via Zoom or a small group face to face, you know, as we're allowed to come back together in smaller groups we're we're getting to that point in our area here, thankfully. So, you know, bringing them together as just a small grade level team and teaching them that way. So, you know, my plans are, you know, as I'm making tutorials this summer is just the various ways and blending them all together. You know, we want our, we've been teaching the whole flip learning concept to teachers for years and talking about how they can use that. So I'm definitely approaching that way with my professional development trainings. In review today, Susan, I think we can agree that doing long form PDs is appropriate. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily sold that eight hours in one day is it, but I'm not necessarily sold that five days in a row at two hours each is also it. All right. I think we all have to be creative. I know that if you're listening out there, you've probably thought about this. You're probably in the middle of planning it. And I know that Susan and I would love to share some of your ideas. If you're interested in, in coming on the show and talking about it, would love to hear you. You can always reach out to us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or send me an email over at feedback at teachercast.net. And, and if you have a menu, right, like what does your virtual boot camp look like? I, 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 I'm so proud of all the work that Steph Howell and, and all of her GEG leaders are doing. Yes. Uh, check out all the stuff over at, at, at hashtag global GEG. And of course, you can check out our, our bonus episode last week on that because they're really doing some good things in a global environment. And, you know, it is easier now more than ever to create online PD, you know, making videos, making live things, going out on YouTube, on StreamYard, on whatever the platform is, it is easier now. Getting teachers to engage while they're at home might be as hard as getting your students to engage while they're at home. And then again, how do you give credit? What does credit look like? I have no idea to answer to some of these questions, but I'm sure that you guys do out there. So we would love to hear answers from you. This is episode number 95. You can check out all of the show note links and stuff. Susan, kind of in, in, in closing here, what's your advice? Anybody out there, new tech coach, experienced tech coach, what advice do you have for anybody that's looking to put together their boot camps this summer? Just... I mean, start with, I mean, go basic and start with that Google form if you have to, especially if you're a brand new tech coach and you may not even know your teachers yet. So, you know, send send those feelers out there and, you know, there's nothing wrong with starting with that Google form if, if you haven't been into the observe them. So start with that, get their feedback and just, you know, start with just an introductory video of yourself and what you have to offer and encourage them to contact you as much as possible. And then just interview your administrators and you know some of those star teachers and you know go from there and, and ask that, for advice from us we're happy to help and guide 
And if you're interested in coming to talk about this, we are going to be discussing this on our next uh, tech coach meeting. We, of course, meet every single Wednesday night at 830 Eastern. We had a good group last week, uh, had a, a fantastic conversation about PD, PD styles. We even got into a amazing conversation on, on tech coaching in a world of equality and making sure that we as tech coaches are hitting every single student, every single uh, teacher, every single administrator, making sure that we are not uh, you know, excluding people from yes. the work that we're trying to do. Absolutely. It was an amazing conversation. And we would love to have you guys join us every single Wednesday. You can, of course, find out more information over at Ask the Tech Coach or find us online at Ask the Tech Coach on Twitter. Susan, I know you're going to be putting together some great stuff. We're looking forward to it. I know you just put out a blog post about our show last week of getting a tech coach job. So if you guys haven't checked out last week's episode on getting a tech coach job and are still interested in being a tech coach this year or next, check that stuff out. Susan, thank you so much for joining us today. Always great to be here. And yes, I'm so excited about the blog post um, that Jeff and I collaborated on. And it's on both of our sites. I'm at techimaginations.net. And um, it's also on TeacherCast. So um, check us out. And of course, we want to say thank you guys for making TeacherCast part of your professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach podcast, episode 95, How to Run a Successful Boot Camp. Check out everything over at askthetechcoach.com for more information. And we are going to be relaunching our mastermind program this fall. If you're interested in amazing professional learning and getting some mentorship from Susan and I, check us out. We've got some great things only here on the TeacherCast Educational Network. And that wraps up this episode. On behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.